So while cleaning out a workshop today, I stumbled upon this old thing sitting alone and dusty in a corner. Uh, if you can't see it, this is a SyncMaster 225BW 22-inch uh, LCD monitor, 1680x1050 resolution, pretty much the industry standard monitor for uh, about 2007-2008. And this monitor is one of the famous monitors which really gave the capacitor plague uh, its name. Because I dare say every single one of these which has uh, I mean, you know, over 15,000 hours has succumbed to bad caps in the power supply. And I will be damn surprised if this one is any different. Uh, these are very nice monitors in my opinion. I really like them. And in fact, uh, you can even see my test monitor in the background there is indeed one exactly like this. Uh, my preference for them comes from the fact that they do not auto adjust the source. So you can have two different computers hooked up and it won't be swapping randomly between them when you turn them on and off. Uh, so I'm hoping this one's going to be a bit newer than mine. Mine's got about 30 to 40,000 hours on it and it's starting to show. So I think we'll just take this thing apart and see if we can do anything to remedy it. I haven't actually tested it, but yeah, it's going to have bad caps from the power supply. I will bet you that. As far as servicing goes, these are pretty okay monitors. You can, as you can see, you actually unbolt the semi vessa uh, foot on them. They have done the evil thing where they put two hinges there instead of holes, but you can just drill new holes and use these for other monitors if you want to. I've done that in the past, it works quite well. And they actually have a few screws on the back. If we read the note while we're taking it apart, uh, it indeed says it's a. Uh, 225BW and uh, it's dated September 2007. Uh, I believe I picked this thing out of the trash. Uh, might even have been this year. So it has lived a long and prosperous life. I don't remember if that's actually a screw or not. Let's find out. Nope. Not a screw. And uh, now this should just come apart like all the others. There we go. We are inside. There we go. The back just lifts off. Uh, that's our main board power supply module. Panel in this thing. Oh, it's a Chime, cheapo panel. So this thing could actually like to have bad uh, tubes as well. That almost looks like it. But we'll have to have a working power supply first. And yes indeed. Well, let's get a close up on that. So if you've got keen eyes for this sort of thing, you can see that pretty much all the secondary uh, smoothing caps are done for, uh, what's that, five of them in total. There's just a little bootstrappy thing, that's probably going to be all right. Uh, so we've got failures of two 330 microfarad uh, 25 volts, uh, as well as uh, two 820 microfarad 25 volts there and one more 330 25 there. So let's just make quick work out of this, replace those and be back in a moment. There we go, all new caps installed. Um, I didn't really have the right value, so I took some liberties. 
uh, these two 330 microfarad ones have been replaced with 470 microfarad ones and these two 820s have also been replaced with 470s. I didn't do any math but it's going to be close enough uh, an approximation to the original values for me to be happy. Uh, the 330 down here has been replaced by 220 and I also added a 220 to this un unpopulated space there. They left it out in production but it was in the design for a reason so you might as well put it in there. So one last thing to do with this particular model is to check this fuse because these tend to about half the time uh, they go bad when the power supply goes bang so let's see. But that one's made it through okay. Oh yes, I also replaced this little start cap there just to be on the safe side. These usually don't go bad in this model, but it's a really cheap fix. So now I think we can test this thing. All right, so I just connected everything up a bit haphazardly, lying in a pile. Uh, no need for a signal cable. We just want to see if the panel fires up because that's the usual symptom, just entire death of the device. So. We've got the camera uh, watching the power consumption, so let's just flick the switch and see what happens. Uh, screeching a little. Uh, it's not too happy. Alright, I've added the power button, so that, it might have just been turned off. A bit of screeching is a pretty normal for 4 4 which may pay as well. So let's just see if it does anything. I've got a blue LED, drawing a couple of watts. And bam, we've got backlight. So if this stays on for a while, uh, I'm just going to reassemble this, but uh, I'm going to have a bit of a smell around here in case we have a bad tube in the panel as well, as is all too common on these 22 inch panels. I'll say that smells quite all right. So back together it goes. Alright, we're almost done assembling this thing, so let's just give it a final test with the old computer. And we've got some image. So I'm going to give that a green light. And call it OK. Oh, there we go. That looks most excellent to me. So let's just have a play around and change the most important setting auto source manual thank you very much and have a look at uh, how many hours this thing has actually run so to get to the service menu on these uh, you said for brightness and contrast is zero and i believe you hold the either menu or ok button for five seconds and it should pop up And there we go. And what did I tell you? 13,000 hours. 13,000 hours on the panel, and that's what pretty much what all of these do. Until the caps go bad, anyway. But replace those, and I'm going to bet you this one's going to run for quite another while. And uh, just for comparison, let's uh, have a look at how long my other ones run. So, brightness and contrast is zero. And hold enter for five seconds. Oh wow. I was dead wrong on this one. 16,294 hours. I'm honestly surprised. I must have been confusing it with another one. I have had one of these which has run stupid amounts of hours. I must have sold it or something. 
Oh well. I guess both of these are pretty fresh then. I don't think they have the same panel though, so if they're gonna look different ones I could just calibrate them. But uh, yeah, I, these aren't high fidelity monitors by any means. They're good lab monitors because they don't switch the bloody source. And they seemingly run for a very long time. So, with that, I guess I'll leave you. Thank you for watching. Cheerio. By the way, if you guys want to see me produce better quality content in the future with more multi-camera work, fancier editing, better audio and what have you, do consider visiting the Patreon link which I've buried somewhere around here. Because the fact of the matter is, I owe this entire recording setup to you guys. And it would be wonderful if we could keep that trend going into the future. So thank you ever so much for watching. I sincerely hope to be able to put this gear you guys have paid for into good use. And we'll see you around in future videos. Take care. Cheerio.